Hi, I'm Graeme Steele, CEO and founder of CryptoSense, and today I'm going to talk to you about the latest news in post-quantum cryptography. In particular, I'm going to talk about two reports that came out in the last month, so came out in February 2021, that are really interesting for anyone who's trying to follow this topic and get ready for a post-quantum cryptography migration. So if you've been following the subject or if you've watched our introductory video on it, you'll know that we need post-quantum cryptography because as soon as there's a reasonably large quantum crypto uh, computer available, it's going to be able to break traditional cryptography around uh, asymmetric key. So any public-private key cryptography that we currently use is going to be broken. Uh, and so there's a competition running and it's being organized by NIST, the American Standards Body, uh, and a whole bunch of people have submitted candidates there and it's now into round uh, three. Uh, and so these two reports are basically talking about the candidates that are left and telling us some interesting things about them uh, and also some interesting things about how we might get ready to, to adopt them. So the first report uh, has come out of ENISA. So ENISA is a body which is a little bit like the European equivalent of NIST, though not exactly because of the way the states are organized and so on. Uh, but what's really interesting to know is the report is edited by Nigel Smart and Tanya Langer, who are two of the best cryptographers we have in Europe, so you can be sure that the technical quality uh, is going to be very good. And it's also pitched at a really nice level, so you don't have to be a cryptographer to understand it and get a lot out of it. Of course, there are references in there that you can go really deep if you want to. So what do you get? So first of all, you get a summary of the five families of algorithms that are still in the final. So recall that the reason that quantum computers are going to be able to break current asymmetric cryptography is because they're able to factor a very large number that's product of two large primes uh, in a very efficient way. And that's the hard problem that uh, RSA uh, cryptography uh, is based on, uh, for example. And so every asymmetric uh, algorithm that we're currently using widely is, is based around that uh, problem and can be broken by a computer that can break that problem. So we need a different problem. So uh, the authors explain the five candidates that have made it into the final, the five families of candidates based around those five difficult problems that we believe are not just difficult mathematical problems for a classical computer, but also difficult to find an algorithm that will be efficient on a quantum computer. So that's uh, code-based schemes, uh, lattice-based, hash-based, multivariate-based, and isogeny-based. And so to find out what those five things are, there's a great tight explanation uh, in the ANISA report, uh, which can really help you sort of understand the intuition of roughly what's going on there. Then you get a breakdown of the algorithms that have made it through to the final. And for each of those, you get a bit about the design, a bit about the key lengths involved, uh, some information about the current state of the art of their crypt analysis, and some advantages and disadvantages, which is super, super interesting to get a snapshot of what we know, where we are, and, and how these things are progressing. And finally, there's a section on mitigation. So if you really need a solution to uh, post-quantum cryptography right now, before we get a, a winner in the finalist, what can you do? So they talk about how to use uh, hybrid schemes, for example, where you use both classical and a candidate post-quantum algorithm uh, to manage your keys. Uh, so for example, to combine together to give you the key that you use for symmetric encryption. Uh, and there's a lot of really interesting information about that and how you can beef up current asymmetric algorithms with a pre-shared key and how this would work and so on. Uh, but the main conclusion is that for most people, what you should be using this time to do is to generate a catalog of where you use asymmetric cryptography throughout your estate, including uh, code update in particular and including uh, third party stuff. So if you're interested in cryptography inventory, uh, we've got some other videos about that here on the channel. Otherwise, I definitely thoroughly recommend that you download the ENISA report. So it's free and you can just uh, grab it and there'll be a link down there in the comments. The second report that came out last month is by the Cloud Security uh, Alliance, the CSA. The editor is a guy called Ludovic Perret, who also works in post-quantum cryptography. And what this is doing is trying to establish which of those five families of algorithms we should or we could have the most uh, confidence in. So it's, it's a much lighter paper than the ANISA one. Um, so what they're doing essentially is taking the uh, ePrint archive. So that is the uh, archive of cryptographic research papers exists since the late 90s and is managed by the IACR. So that's the main uh, international body for, for academic conferences around the subject of cryptography. And they're searching essentially by the keywords associated with those families of algorithms. 
Uh, and for every year, they essentially plot out how many papers appeared talking about those kinds of algorithms and how many of those papers were about cryptanalysis. So typically for, let's say, lattice-based cryptography, you might see a whole bunch of papers proposing some new scheme with a lattice-based scheme and a whole bunch of papers trying to break existing stuff. Uh, and the, the idea is that you're going to have more confidence in a family of algorithms that has a really thorough history of, of cryptanalysis and proposals, and we've really explored that. Perhaps you might have more confidence than one that hasn't had a lot of uh, academic research on, on it so far. So, for example, sometimes people say, well, we should definitely go with code-based schemes because code-based cryptography has been around for 40 years. But as the authors of this paper demonstrate, some of these more recent schemes, so lattice base is a good example, have actually had tons and tons of papers written about them and lots and lots of cryptanalysis uh, done, partially because there was this widely publicized entry scheme at the, at the end of the 1990s that attracted a lot of uh, interest. So they don't come to any particular conclusion in the paper, but there's some interesting data in there to take a look at if you're thinking about uh, which of these families is, is going to end up being the winner. And again, you can grab that uh, report for free. So go ahead and download those. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the CryptoSense channel to stay up to date with all the latest news on this and other topics in cryptography. And I'll see you very soon here on the channel for another video. Mm -hmm.